Podcast people. Podcast life, isn't it? <laughs> Is that for the snap? Yeah. Obviously. It's always about the snap, gang. How do you feel about your first podcaster? Uh, yeah, it should be fun. <laughs> <laughs> should be fun or it is fun. Uh. <sighs> How was your day, though? Yeah, my day was really good. Woke up really early because I went to church. Yeah. Then... Oh, you love the early service now, don't you? Yeah. So there's this, like, 7 a.m. prayer. Damn. On Tuesdays. Yeah. So I, I kind of go to that. And then after that, went to work. Just chilled. Like, my workplace is calm because there's so many of us. Oh, okay. So it's not So no like, stress on the projects and stuff? No. Yeah. Like, not that... Well, now I've got a new task. Mm-hmm. Because that basically with the with the case that we're doing, there's several councils that are doing the same thing. Oh, okay. So what they're doing before we have our actual case hearing, mm-hmm. they're trying to summarize all the different ones that are already happening. So the ones that are already in court now. Yeah. So that we can kind of suss out what we need to prepare for. Oh, I see. Yeah, when our time comes. So I'm now doing a summary on the on two days of Nottinghamshire. Was it like a report you were writing or something? Yeah. Yeah. Oh nice. So. That's serious. I don't know how I'll be able to cope going to church before like working. So. There's so much going on at the moment. I wouldn't even have a clue what to do in the early morning service. And the worst part is going to church and then falling asleep as well. As in, ah, that's, tell me about it. it's not good. Yeah. It's, it's not good at all. But I, I think it's because I set my mind. And mm-hmm. so, and plus I'm a morning person anyway. Yeah. So for me, it's like, once I decide, okay, this is what I want to do, yeah, then I'm do like, it. I'm up and I'm yeah. off. And but do you feel energised in the morning before you get there or do you feel energised afterwards? Like, at what I point feel, do you, you get your energy? I feel energised when I finish my program. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's when I, when I finish, I'm like, okay, rah, like, I'm excited for my day. Because mm, mm. um, I feel like soul, spirit alignment yeah. works my body. Oh, that's like, amazing. wakes me yeah. up, Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. But um, what I was about to say is that you came appropriately dressed for the um, the occasion in the month. Since October is the official Black History Month. It is. Isn't it? In the yeah. UK. In the UK, yeah. It's February in um, the States, isn't it? In the it? States, because yeah. that's when Abraham Lincoln's birthday is on the 14th and he was oh, yeah. there. And um, was it Frederick Douglass Frederick as well? Frederick Douglass as well, who yeah. is the um, enslaved... Yeah. individual who had escaped yeah. and was part of the abolition abolitionist movement yeah yeah, yeah. but there's a funny story because um, he actually did end up marrying a white woman with some people are still kind of um a bit not too sure about considering the status that he's been given amongst like black Very people and in particular in black history yeah interracial relationship interracial relationship i'm all down for it but <laughs> i mean if he's meant to be one of the figureheads in terms of like black history then it does bring a different narrative into it doesn't it It does make it difficult yeah but i do believe love is love Most I, definitely. but at the same time it's like where do you stand because a yeah. lot of people especially pro-black individuals yeah. they believe that you know, the progression of blackness Mm -hmm. has to be maintained within the family and through generational lines and through our bloodline. And so now when you break out... Yeah, it becomes an issue. Question mark! (laughs) (laughs) Ding, ding, ding. (laughs) But the thing is, you can't... It's hard to put, like, a blocker on love because if you feel an emotion towards someone and you have a connection with an individual, regardless of their skin tone, it's, like, it's irrelevant. Do you know what I mean? It's true. So, but there's one statement I'm going to read you before we continue and then I'm going to ask your opinion about it. So recently, um, Wandsworth Library actually tweeted out something which was quite interesting. And I'm going to read this tweet out to you and then just let me know what you think about it. So they said, October is Diversity Month in Wandsworth Library, Hmm. celebrating and learning together about many and varied experiences and cultures within our borough. Does that statement make sense to you? Uh, Let's, let's, can you just give it one? I'll give it once off again, Yeah. yeah. So they tweeted out, this is Wandsworth Library. Yeah? Okay. They tweeted out, October is Diversity Month in Wandsworth Library. Mm-hmm. Celebrating and learning together about the many and varied experiences and cultures within our borough. We understand that. Yeah. And I think if we, if we don't have the emotional intelligence or mm-hmm. the, the, the basic intellect yeah. to understand that diversity is an issue that we must celebrate, it's mm-hmm. something that we must, you know... We must, like, integration yeah. is a key thing within our society. Most definitely, yeah. Especially in a multicultural city in a, as well. Yeah. 110%. Yeah, super and, and And Wandsworth is very, very diverse. Mm-hmm. And so I, under, I, I personally understand that statement. Mm. Where the issue does lie yeah. is, is the fact that 
there is a black story mm -hmm. and there's a black story that has been attached to this particular month. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we get diversity and we get diversity all year round. Yeah. So when we have the opportunity to, to celebrate a black narrative, mm -hmm. a people who were enslaved to build up this economy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We now have an opportunity to be like, this is our story and this is where we want to move forward. Yeah. But one thing I will ask is, should we then be encouraging the idea that our history is confined to one month? A hundred and ten percent. It's mm. just that this is this is the extra emphasis that we need. Yeah. We live in a time where we've got Brexit going on. We've got all these wars mm -hmm. happening. It's yeah. very difficult most definitely, yeah. <laughs> for the most oppressed group in our society yeah. to be screaming every single every single um, month mm -hmm. in this year. So when we have one, let's have our time to be vocal. Yeah. Let's have our time to share our experiences. Mm -hmm. Let's have our time to communi uh, communicate with Most each other yeah. about yeah. what has happened, mm -hmm. what is happening, and as a people, how we're going forward. Yeah. Give us that just one month. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not, I just, I just don't see what is difficult. And it's yeah. synony synonymous to the um, all lives matter mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. We get all, we get the fact that mm -hmm. all lives matter. Yeah. But unfortunately, there we we not we don't live in this utopia where mm -hmm. that that understanding. But um, my issue with the whole uproar against the like the government or a I don't know a local council or a local body is that should we be giving them the power for them to control the narrative because nowadays the market is open. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to throw a celebration in, if we wanted to throw a party, for instance, or a festival in celebration of black history or Asian history and any history, no one is holding us back from doing that. Yeah. But the moment we, we, we sort of like uproar against that, we're kind of giving them the power in essence, aren't we? Or The power's already there. Mm. So as people, let's utilise it. Mm. And the thing is, there's an infrastructure that they have yeah. that makes the the information um, a lot broader so mm -hmm. for me in w with black history month is the fact that education systems mm. are now you know um emphasizing the story yeah that's something that a, a couple mm -hmm. of black people down brixton can't do most definitely exactly yeah so that's where it's like okay Let's have this month to really mm -hmm. educate as many people as possible yeah. about the black narrative within the UK. Most definitely. But who, so in terms of the library putting out that tweet, who, who holds the responsibility, would you say? Um, is, is that an individual who's just, I don't know, who's in charge <laughs> of the media department there and just had an agenda against black people? Or was it like a systematic I thing from it's, higher up it's, government? It's a hundred and ten percent. It's local authority. Mm -hmm. They've they feel like you know diversity is an issue that we should be yeah. pushing forward, and so mm -hmm. they've used this channel yeah. as a means to you know mm. um, bring forth this message. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't think it's one little individual who's come out and tweeted. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't think they they have that power, but local authorities mm. have, have assessed that you know what our borough is pretty diverse, mm. and. We, if we if we're saying that oh we need to push forward um this Black History Month then yeah. what about our Southeast Asians yeah definitely what about our you know what about the Italians the Italians yeah, yeah. You what know? about the Greeks yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so forth I mean my major issue with it in particular was not the fact that they decide well the fact that they decided to put it in October because mm -hmm. one that's a major slap in the face. <laughs> But the thing that really hit me, which I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about, mm -hmm. was considering all that's happened with the Windrush generation and the scandal that we've had throughout the whole year in terms of like the, the, the treatment of them and some of them having to pay loads of money fighting unnecessary court cases. Yep. The timing was completely off. Because I like to believe that like my people's history is the world's history. Do you see what I mean? I understand, of, I understand the idea of having it in a particular month or a yeah. particular day just to highlight things, yeah. just to elaborate on it so yeah. that people don't forget the narrative that mm -hmm. this is our story. Yeah. You've got to remember our journey, where we came from and where we are now and how we're going to progress going forward. Yeah. But for a local body to completely disregard what has happened throughout the year, that to me was the biggest mistake. Do you know what Terrible. I mean? And, and that's when I thought, okay, no, this is not right. Like This needs to be looked into. And someone needs to be held accountable for whatever it is that they're trying to do. And I know loads of other local councils try to abolish it completely. Yeah. And I think what for me as well is the, is the effort and the labour that has mm. come from this particular group of people. Yeah. 
mm. in this country. Mm. Not many ethnic groups, I don't think any other ethnic group can mm. truly say that we, w- we were brought from our homes mm-hmm. yeah. to serve your land mm. in the hopes mm. that, and, 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 and with the promise that I'm going to be a British citizen. Yeah. Then to turn around and say, mm. uh, we can't find your documents. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a, a major disservice. Yeah, most definitely. To, to the level of labour that people have um, have given mm. to this particular land. Most definitely. Most definitely. But if I, if I say Black History Month, what does that represent to you like as a person? To me, Black mm. History Month is an opportunity yeah. to, to really celebrate those who have fought for black rights. Mm-hmm to invest in black businesses and to, to have that consciousness. And it's like, obviously we can do that every, mm. um, every month. But I realize that when it comes to Black History Month, it's like, okay, because I'm constantly sold regular books on, on mm. the market who, um, and they're predominantly by white mm. writers and that's just how it... Um, let me, I was like, oh my gosh, I really need to be conscious about, you mm. know, black writers, mm. black artists, like... Mm really so into my community That's and I feel like that remembrance in October it's just like okay I just went on Amazon I was like yeah I need to start yeah. googling it it's yeah. it's just that kind of it gives you the opportunity to just kind of remember and focus and home in on what we as a culture bring mm-hmm. Black History Month is an opportunity for us to really realize okay there is a story but as an individual, where am I taking this story? Yeah. I feel like a lot of the times we are trapped mm-hmm. in the fact that, okay, we were, we were slaves yeah. and we were, yeah. we were slaves. That's, yeah. that's the end. We, we, were sla- we were slaves. Yeah. <laughs> we were yeah. slaves and we were slaves. Mm-hmm. Okay, but how can we, in this country, mm-hmm. maintain our kingship, our authority, yeah. and use that culture that we have? I think it's the confidence as well. Exactly. That's one thing that we lack a exactly. lot within our community. Have yeah. that confidence. Mm-hmm. And as well, teach younger people. Like, I was, I, I was challenging my younger brother. Mm. What, what What is pro-black? Are you a pro-black man? And he mm. said that, you know, he goes to his local auntie's... <laughs> auntie <laughs> And he goes to Auntie Kate's, yeah. you know, to get his kenke, and he's investing in a business. I yeah. said, just to even... Yeah widen his perspective yeah yeah it's i mean the word pro-black in itself i, I don't know because when i'm asked whether i'm pro-black or not I sometimes i have to think twice about it because i'm like <laughs> what is it to be pro-black it's, it's so I mean? interesting and it's like yeah. we have to i feel like as individuals we have to formulate that for us most definitely and there's so many different variations of what the actual word means because when someone asks me am i pro-black the first thing that comes into my mind is do I love myself? Do I love the skin that I'm in? Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, of course I do. Like, I really love it. Like, really do. But to others, pro-black means way more. It's like living a black life, like completely emerging yourself in black culture. And, and the thing not is, marrying and, outside your race or dating and outside and the thing, your race. The and thing I can't... Is, we, we as a people can't even say what blackness is. Yeah. So yeah. How, do, how do I live a black life? Mm. I'm, it seems I'm, like an identity that's been like bestowed upon us, literally. <laughs> exactly. And so yeah. I'm going to live my life yeah. and I'm going to live my life with the consciousness that, okay, mm. there's a history that I, I, I must accept yeah. and there's somewhere that I need to go forward with it. Yeah. But I'm not going to be stressing my life yeah. and trying to <laughs> adopt these um, weird, yeah. you know... I, Do you I, think our identity for most part of it, especially for us here um, in diaspora, has been given to us? And we don't really understand it because it seems like we're constantly in, in this loop where we're like psychological immigrants forever. Do you see what I mean? It's like we don't know whether we're coming or going. And that can be quite problematic because I had a conversation with a gentleman the other yeah. day, a doctor, and he said something interesting. He said one of the major issues we're having nowadays currently in this mm-hmm. generation is identity crisis. 100%. Because we were brought here... Some of us were born in the UK or born in the Western world and raised here, but then we still have that conflict within ourselves whether we're fighting to find acceptance in the countries that we're in Mm -hmm. and then also trying to identify where our origins are. So it's like you have a British boy who's black, he'll be asked, oh, where are you from, mate? And then he's then having to go back and explain his whole like they family do. family <laughs> genome and be like oh where are you from from where are you from where from? are you really from where are you really from it's like, like oh i was born in like lambeth but <laughs> my mom is from nigeria my dad is from ghana which is like on the west coast of africa and i'm black and i'm also south londoner but are you british though or what are you so it's it's, yeah. it's it's to me i think we make it too complicated yeah 
Definitely. And going back to the doctor who I was speaking to yeah. as well, he said one of the one of the issues he, he did mention that that was one of the major issues and he said in order to solve this issue mm -hmm. we need to allow the next generation coming up to accept their britishness if they're going to be british like fair enough yeah you're black you have a history <laughs> learn your history understand your history know where you're coming from but then also bear in mind that you are british you're born here do you see what I mean? And you will know that when you go back. Oh, yeah, 100%. And people they, don't understand exactly, that. <laughs> they will let you know. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny that mm. we have this hyper, like, I'm, I'm majorly Ghanaian, I'm majorly yeah. Nigerian. Go back to Ghana, they'll call you a white girl. <laughs> go to a market and see how they will bump you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. quickly. Quickly. Yeah. You know, and my experience as a 23-year-old here mm. and a 23-year-old in Ghana, yeah. completely different. Different. But how did you find it, though? How did you feel, though? Because... When, when you're in that environment and... Wait, I'm 24. You're 24 I'm now. So Literally, a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> you're a big girl now. <laughs> but how did, how did that make you feel? Because I've had the same experience, yeah. but I wanted to know how you felt. Because going back to Ghana, you must have felt like, oh, okay, I'm going back to my homeland now. I'm Do you know what I mean? touch the soil. You're going to touch the soil. Like, gonna it's going to be real. It's going to be real. <laughs> it's going to be really real, But when yeah. you get there and then you get identified as mm. a British girl, sometimes they even call you a white girl. Yeah. How does that make you feel, like, in terms of, like, your, or your own identity? You know what? You, you do feel lost. Because mm. it's like, where, where, mm. where do I really belong? Yeah. You know, in this society, yes, I, I truly... Because I, found, I, found, I have a community mm -hmm. who I can identify with. Mm. But on a day-to-day, -day, people still see me as a black female. Yeah. And they still do the, where are you from, from? Yeah. And then you go back and it's like, you're not really from here either. Mm. And it, so it, it, it does give you this weird, like, okay, where do I truly belong? And then you yeah. just have to find a place in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> it comes to, you have to find a place in your heart and just, you know, yeah. connect with it. It, it does and, get that real, yeah. It, 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 because mm. what, what can you really do? Yeah. So I try to connect with what I can connect with. Mm -hmm. over here mm. and connect with what I do connect with yeah. over there. So it's like that duality, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And make it work mm. and not try to make things so complicated yeah. and try to create a stamp here and create a stamp, a stamp there. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, I've really been intrigued to find out what that does to the mind mm. for, of a human mm. being psychologically mm. because I feel it, but obviously I don't have the medical know-how to understand what it truly does because mm -hmm. it must have significant effect on us and how we view the world and our experience within the world. Yeah. Obviously, it's a bit different for me because I was born in Ghana but then I lived part of my life in Sweden and the majority of my life in London, in London. so I've been through it so culturally like I've was it more of a shock in Sweden or in or in London um probably more so in London really yeah the strange part is because I came into London with a funny British accent I sounded ah. part American part Scandinavian <laughs> but then I was pure black I'm a dark-skinned black guy yeah so imagine going into a school a secondary school in London looking how I'm looking, but then sounding like, I don't know, a, a Scandinavian <laughs> American. Like, it was completely confusing. It's a hot mess. It's a hot mess. Yeah. So to them, it's like, oh, who are you? Where are you from? Like, how comes you sound weird type yeah. of thing? And that cultural shock was probably bigger than the one coming from Ghana to Sweden. Because Ghana to Sweden was more of an intrigue. I'm the only black kid in yeah. Sweden. Yeah. I'm the only black kid in the school. So it's like, oh, there's the kid. But in Sweden, the area that I lived in, everyone's pretty nice anyway. Yeah. So it was more like, oh, we want to find out more about you, more about your experience. And then I probably end up making up some random stories just to sound cool or, or be more interesting than I was. Cause, yeah. Yeah, I'd come straight from Ghana. But identity is such a strange, strange thing. And it can cause a major crisis. And now, in particular, with 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 technology and with like education and youtube and so forth more people are finding out more about themselves and yes. their past and their history yes. Yes. so then we we become intrigued with what we don't know in the past and then we tend to get caught up in the middle and then we have this major complex which we're discussing it's, now so. it's this cognitive dissonance you know Definitely. With, you know where do like who who am i am yeah. i meant to be this am yeah. i am i meant to be that and yeah. it's like mm. you're meant to be you yeah but then you can't avoid the fact that you're black and wherever you go, there's going to be a difference, <laughs> especially because you're not in Africa. So wherever you go, yeah. more time, there's going to be a difference between you and anyone that you come across. And that's why there's, mm. a, there's, there's a beauty of knowing mm. and acknowledging yeah. that you are black. Most definitely. All in all, like, I personally feel like the black experience is about acceptance. So it's about educating and accepting. Yeah. And then learning how to move within the environment that you're in. Mm -hmm. and, and also accepting the environment you're in. So my thing is, if I'm going to live in Britain, if I'm going to be British, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to understand the culture, appreciate the culture, whilst also loving who I am and appreciating who I am, regardless of what comes with it. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. So it's about finding a balance between the two, however hard that may be, instead of like resisting and fighting against it. So what does resistance look like though? Resistance is to me is saying, Oh, I, I want nothing to do with Britain. I want nothing to do with the country that I live in and its culture and its people. Oh, okay. Do you know okay. what I mean? I'm gonna identify myself as an an African and that's that. Okay. When you're born in Britain. <laughs> do you see what I mean? That's yeah. that's kind of problematic. Yeah, that and is. That's where we have find our dissidents and then we have the issues that we're having currently. And it's just confusion. It's, it becomes very difficult to even integrate and just communicate with day-to-day -day people thing. and people yeah. become very boxed within their mm. within their social and cultural yeah. networks and yeah. their eyes aren't open and yeah. they're not able to explore or even able to progress mm -hmm. because when you don't assimilate in some way shape or form or even take the opportunity to learn about the different cultures yeah, yeah. then you're going to be stuck most definitely <laughs> And the thing is, we can't deny that there are issues. There are major issues. There are major prejudice. There's, there's, there's major underlining issues. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the they core fundamentals that I've discovered growing up is that you can't use those issues as an excuse to not go for stuff. You can't use those issues as an excuse to not progress or to not try things. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Because excuses is the biggest hindrance ever. And the moment you give someone the ability to, to use excuses, they become less productive. And you're stuck. And you're stuck. And uh, for me, with the, oh, I didn't get this because I'm black. I mm. didn't get this because I'm black. Yeah, we understand that mm. there, institutional racism mm. is a real thing. Mm -hmm. So when people try to act like it isn't oh, yeah, real, no, it's, you know, it's, it's, there, a, yeah. it's a real thing. Yeah. But sometimes you're just not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's let's, the thing. Let's, let's be real. <laughs> let's be real. Let's yeah. be real. Yeah. Because nowadays we're seeing more and more people mm. obtain these positions. Yeah, most definitely. So... Truly, we need to respect that there's institutional racism, yeah. but there's still a thing called meritocracy. Yeah. When you work hard... Yeah, it's on merit. Yeah. Make yourself <laughs> undeniable. That's, that's one thing it's I always true. say. Because, I mean, um, I was looking at, like, sports statistics the other day. Yeah. And um, when you look at, like, American basketball, like, football and so forth, majority tend to be... Majority of the teams tend to be full of, like, black men. Yeah. And... It, a lot has to do with like physicality, the strength of black men, mm -hmm. muscle mass, and all these other like scientific stuff and so forth. So they're undeniable in that field, yeah. which means that when it comes to the top 100 or the top 1,000 in the world, it's going to be majority them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Nothing is blocking them from getting there because they're undeniable. And you can take that into any other field, whether that be law, math, science. If you're undeniable in your field and you're good enough, you can make it. Do you know what I mean? There yeah. is a position for you, but yeah. if you're not good enough then you're just maybe not good enough, even though there might be, there might be other things hindering you or preventing you from getting to the position that which you need to get into. So sometimes we may need to focus on ourselves and our own development before we go and blame a system which we can't explain or see. And so it's very easy to, you know, come out of uni and it's like, oh, my dad is working here. Yeah. I've got this placement. Yeah. And you have this seamless progression mm -hmm. up this ladder yeah. through nepotism, right? Yeah. But unfortunately... We don't have that experience. Yeah. And so when those who do um, make it when it comes to corporate spheres or what in mm. whatever industry that you're in, it's creating avenues for other people mm. as well to progress as well and to have that opportunity yeah. to, um, to progress. Most definitely. I think that's very important because it's, it's difficult mm. and you know it's difficult. So when you've arrived, how <laughs> dare you? Yeah. Just sit there yeah. in your throne and forget everybody. Everybody else, yeah. In order for it to work for you and your community, you have to build your own systems because you're in a land which, one, doesn't belong to you, yeah. and two, they were built in a way before you came. Yeah. So once you've been brought here now and whatever situation or environments you've been put through, you've got to build your own systems to provide for your own. And that is the reality of the situation. You can complain and howl about the system, but nonetheless, yes, it belongs to who it belongs to. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? And it's interesting you said that about like the education system, people coming out of school and having opportunities. Um, it, like, for instance, in the 70s, when the schooling system went completely pear-shaped, a lot of working class people suffered, black and white. Yes. And the issue being that a lot of the white people that suffered during this time 
as you mentioned, they had family members in factories. So they could leave secondary school with no education whatsoever or no decent grades and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they'll still be struggling academically, but they'll still have work in factories, in warehouses, whether it be the mines and whatever and so forth. Whilst they, the first generation of blacks who came over, they did not have these opportunities. We did not have these systems built for us. There weren't a generation beforehand that could to bring you in. To and, you know, yeah, like, like, yeah. And that's what happened. So going forward, we have to put all these things into consideration mm -hmm. and learn from history. Do you know what I mean? Because um, I had a friend who recently um, I recorded a podcast with, mm -hmm. Samuel, who said one of the issues with history is that we don't learn from history, which is quite problematic. Because if you don't see patterns, if you're not able to read patterns and work towards improving or aligning yourself for in a better position by looking at history, yeah. you're not going to progress. Yeah, so cool. we know what caused the issues historically. Opportunities weren't there. We weren't bringing each other in yeah. with those opportunities yeah. in the first place. You saw the people who were bringing each other in with opportunities making it. So why don't you do the same when the blueprints are laid out? It just mm. comes from a fear. Mm. It's, it's, um, it's, there's an inbuilt fear that, you know, as a people, mm. there's only one that can enjoy. Yeah. Most definitely. And I, we need to break out of that mentality. Mm. Because really and truly, the more of us that progress, the further mm. we're all going to go out. Most definitely. Yeah. And so as, and, until, we, until we come out of that greed, that mm. fear that, okay, there's not enough, mm. we're, we're all going to be stuck. Yeah. And there's, we, we also have this confidence issue within us that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're just not good enough or we, it's not meant for us or like, like, we can't do it type of thing. Do you know what I mean? And I think confidence is a major issue within our community as well. We, there are certain things that we need to begin to unlearn mm -hmm. in order for us to, you know, really, um, within the society, take charge yeah. where we can. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And, and confidence is one of those things. It's mm -hmm. a major thing. And confidence comes from knowing that you have, like, a solid backing. Mm -hmm. So it's like secondary school, like, when you knew you had an older cousin, yeah. you knew you can push in the line in the dealer line because no one can try with you because everyone knows that you have an older cousin or what, whatnot to like back you if, the, if anything kicks off. So that gave you a certain level of confidence. Yeah. Our community, we don't have much of value. We, we feel like, not necessarily like we feel like, asset-wise, we don't. Do you know what I mean? Financially, as a, strong, as a, okay, as a, yeah, as okay, a stronghold, yeah. we don't. Mm -hmm. So there's a lack of confidence. Like if you look in the Asian community, for instance, they built up their wealth now. Yeah. So they have a level of confidence that we don't have. We need that. We need that financial confidence, that financial backing. We need to have assets. We need to, we need to own things. We need to like uplift ourselves so that the, the, the generation below or even our generation can develop a sense of confidence that we own stuff, that we're more, worth more than being entertainers or sports person and, and creatives and so forth one of the reasons why a lot of young black kids nowadays are getting involved in crimes and mm -hmm. and, and 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 gangs and so forth yeah. is that they they have a frustration built up because they have so much creativity which they can't express yeah and if you look at popular culture nowadays we dominate popular culture like blackness is the most it's the most influential culture there is and now. And monetized. And monetized. And that is all the creativity that's built in us, which causes yeah. a sense of frustration when you can't express it. Mm -hmm. Because we haven't been exposed to all these varied forms of, like, I don't know, activities. We haven't been, like, we haven't been... We haven't been exposed to like the sciences, the deep maths, like the, the hard engineering and yeah. stuff like that. These are all the avenues that we should be directing our children into. These are all the avenues that we should be directing our people into because we have the creativity in us. So imagine taking the creativity that we have in, in, in a, let's say, the music industry yeah. and pushing those kids from an early age into sciences and having them use their creativity in sciences. Major part of it is frustration mm -hmm. and lack of confidence, which we need to work on majorly. I, I totally agree. And I, I also want to touch on the issue of um, us as a people truly coming together. Yeah. I think that's a difficult thing for us. Mm -hmm. within, within the black community, there is a lot of compartmentalizing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so when it comes to the issue of, uh, even within families. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> forget tribes. And <laughs> forget <laughs> tribes and forget different yeah. countries. Within mm -hmm. families, just the, there's a lack of unity. Mm. And for, for that generational wealth, to, for us to even build it, we need that sense of unity, mm. oneness of mind, and mm. that goal that we, we need, um, yes. that we want to obtain ownership on yeah. this land. 
And I think that's where the struggle does come. Mm-hmm. And it, but there are several organisations out there that are, you know, providing funding mm. um, for a lot of black entrepreneurs. Mm. And so as well, as a people, we need to do our research. Yeah, most definitely. When I remember, like, um, when it came to, during secondary school time, I ha- I was speaking to some of my friends and they're mm. like, you know, they're doing this internship here and there. Mm. I'm like, how did you find out about it? And it's like, mm. oh, their dad, their uncle, yeah. whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, what system is there for me? Went online mm. and I just was Googling, you know, you know, is there a sense of, like, are there any um, funds available, mm. scholarships available for certain internships, mm. um, different work experience programs? And then I came across the Black Lawyers Directory. Oh, and what, what they do is that they help um, ethnic minority groups mm. in the legal sphere because the legal sphere, unlike the financial sector, mm is still very British and white mm. because of the history behind, yeah. you know, the law, yeah. you know. So um, when I was, I started reading into the program and I saw, okay, there are initiatives out there mm-hmm. to help us, you know, move forward. Oh yeah, definitely. And yeah. it was through that that I managed to get placements within major corporate industries at mm. such a young age. And so are we really doing our research? Yeah. Are we really sourcing? Yeah. Um, Instead <laughs> of sitting back and just like... <laughs> and complaining. complaining. Yeah. Because it's not taking you anywhere. Mm-hmm. So, if find systems that are there mm-hmm. or create one. Yeah. But don't sit there and complain that this system Most isn't definitely. working for you. I completely agree with that. And um, one of the observations I made as well in regards to like our culture is that we're very tribalistic mm. and and the more tribalistic you go and the more it breaks down and becomes like more sub tribes and stuff like that it's harder to then share information yeah because if you're all one it's it's easy so let's say for instance all Ghanaians were one tribe like it, it, obviously here in britain you get someone saying oh i'm from yorkshire i'm from a, yeah. but that's just the region you're yeah. from you might have a funny accent or whatnot <laughs> but it's not as deep as it goes into the african culture where tribes don't even marry outside of tribes like here if someone from down south goes and marries a, a Geordie. I don't know, they, they family might make a few jokes and comments, but it's not that deep. <laughs> yeah. Whilst within, within our culture, first of all, you have countries which yeah. are completely divided. Yeah. And then you have, you have cities. And within those cities, you have five or six tribes. And then you have hundreds of languages within those tribes. Yeah. So we're kind of separating ourselves on such a micro level that it becomes a bit, it becomes harder to share any form of resources. And that's something I don't feel a lot of people look into. Mm. So we're always saying, oh, our community, we don't like sharing. We don't like, you know, we don't like bringing each other in. But if you look at it, we're super tribalistic. So some, I, I once had a conversation with someone and the gentleman, who I'm not going to bait out, <laughs> he was like, oh, everything is down to racism. And I was like, okay, hold on one moment. The moment you take white people out of the equation, we're still tribalistic anyway. Yep. Forget white people anyway. Humans in general are tribalistic. <laughs> yeah. We were killing each other based on you living on the other side of the river and being from a different tribe and, and it's wearing the thing different of power structures. It's power structures. Yeah. But it's specifically to do with like Africans, our culture we hold it very dear to us, and it's a beautiful thing because our yeah. culture is amazing. Yeah. It's bright. It's colorful. Rich. It's, it's rich. It's just beautiful. Yeah. But at the same time, it can be quite divisive in terms of us going forward and and passing on knowledge and bringing each other in and developing like, do you know what I mean? And developing infrastructures and businesses and so forth. So that is one of the things I feel like the ne- next generation need to look at a bit more deeper and be more aware of mm-hmm. that it's beyond just tribes. It's beyond just, do you know what I mean? Countries and regions. If you all want to be one, just treat each other as a whole. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Instead of looking at it from the micro level. And that is my thing in terms of us going forward that we need to not completely eradicate because I don't want to I mean I'm a shanty I'm not going to get rid of that anytime <laughs> soon but yeah. at the same time I'm not going to be averse to doing business or dealing with, with someone, someone who's fancy, who's or... fancy or whatever. I don't even get that <laughs> do you know what I mean maybe because I left Ghana at such an early age and I've lived in various places and I've traveled and most of my friends are from like different places yeah. all different colors and shades so I'm not really tribalistic by nature but when it comes to football yeah Arsenal, <laughs> Arsenal all day long <laughs> yeah. there we go. Those eyes. but when it comes to a thing of culture and, and, and country and nationalism stuff like that I just see 
I just see people as a whole. And you know what? It's because of, for me, we have to look at the objective. Mm -hmm. What do we want for us as a black race? Yeah. What do we want as a people? And mm. so when you look at the long term mm. and the system that we are trying to bring within this UK society, yeah. what's tribes? Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? What is tribes? Yeah. That's the thing. We're trying to build an infrastructure that's going to work for us over here. Mm. So what's all this division? Yeah. I think once we come to the a true consensus on that, mm -hmm. we can neglect all the nitty gritty. Yeah. And then just move forward from there on. Move forward. Amazing. It's been absolutely amazing having you here, Dorcas. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now you're a big girl. I know. You enjoy your birthday. I really did. Yeah. I really did because the year 23 was such a, an amazing journey for me. Yeah. In terms of what I learned truly about myself. Yeah. And Most so definitely. now 24 is like, go make things happen. Yeah. And just you kind of... Um, just kind of follow that momentum. Yeah. I have, I'm on I'm on I'm on a new wave. You're in a new wave, yeah. I'm on a new, new wave, wave, wave yeah. Vibe, like. <laughs> no, it's amazing because I, I mean I've been a witness <laughs> to the growth as well. So like yeah. I'm extremely proud of you to see where you've come from, where you're going. And soon you're gonna be the big time corporate lawyer oh, that come you've been on. working towards. Come on, G. Yes. <laughs> And just yeah. like now, obviously, with our family, big on businesses, big oh, on yeah. property. Oh, yeah. Oh, my business partner as well. Exactly. Yeah. Fan best properties just, group I'm in that. I'm thinking <laughs> so wild and so big. Yeah. And, and that's what makes everything so exciting. No, I'm definitely. so hopeful. Yeah. I'm so hopeful of what I, I have to bring. Yeah. And what I have to leave on this earth. Definitely. And I, I'm full of, full of a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I've, I'm conscious of that now. And you have to be. The thing is, you have to be conscious of all your movements. And, exactly. And one of the things I always try and, like, tell you is that, like, never, never let anyone limit you or box you. And never use any excuses for why you can't accomplish or do something. Because if you make yourself, if you make yourself undeniable, make yourself good enough, like, there is no limits to what you can achieve. So, there, there and look at what we've done so far in terms of, like, our family business and, like, our professional lives and everything that we're doing. There is no limits. I see I'm really, really like, enjoying the learning process. Most definitely, I think once you stop learning, you've, you've literally oh, ended yeah, your yeah. life. Yeah, learning never ends. Yeah. And I feel like people, re it's like, oh, we've done the uni thing and now we're stuck and yeah. we're, we're just going to... Just hang around in the office. Hang yeah. around in the you office. You're don't, don't, not pushing yourself as well. No. That's the thing. And that's one of the reasons why I do this podcast as well because yeah. I don't have the knowledge. I don't yeah. have all the knowledge. So me doing this podcast is a form of is a way of me educating myself as well. So I speak to different. I, I learn from every and anyone. Like I don't see myself as above anyone, whether someone is younger than me or less experienced. Nonetheless, everyone has a story, and everyone's story can have an impact on your life one way or the other. And that's mm -hmm. the best way to learn. So my way of learning now is just having conversations with people and trying to just understand the thought process of the human being and and our experience here and from that, different aspects. For me, that's the number one thing I loved about traveling. Mm. When I was in Malaysia, I, I will never forget this day. I just was walking, minding my own business, mm. and then some old man, obviously, be careful, guys. <laughs> some old man was just like, oh, hi, like, talking. He, he said I should come sit with him, so I was sitting with him. Yeah. And he was just telling me about his experience as a Malaysian man yeah. coming from India. And I just mm. was like, wow. Oh, he was, moved from India. Yeah, he moved from India. Mm. He, he was um, living in Malaysia. Oh, amazing. And just his whole story and how he perceived the land. Mm. I just was like, wow, yeah. this, this is just, to me, it's just so interesting. You, and you realize the depth of every single person mm. when you listen to their story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not every time you're just going to sit at one five star. You're just being, <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes really just go and speak to people. Yeah, submerge yourself submerge into the culture. Submerge yourself into that. the yeah. culture yeah. and get to learn how people experience it. Mm. Yeah. No, definitely. Like traveling for me is, that was probably my coming of age thing as well. Yeah. I just got myself involved in so many different cultures and really submerged myself in those cultures. And it makes you appreciate life even more. Because when you see how the others are living and then you come back, you realise that, wait, sometimes you, you do have something. Do you know what I mean? You might be onto something. But when you're stuck in your bubble or you're stuck in your little vicinity, you don't really appreciate what's around you I'm and the opportunities that's bestowed upon you. So. Well, it's, when I was in Singapore, I remember coming from there, I was like, there is money to be made. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This world is so big. Yeah. Singapore, where everyone is six <laughs> persons, like a millionaire. Like, this <laughs> world is so 
big mm. and there are so many different things that you can be doing mm. that to me to come and sit here in one small London box and just be like meh, 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 yeah. meh. like come on <laughs> there's a glass ceiling yeah there's a glass ceiling <laughs> and you I'm know. stuck yeah nah yeah. Break, let's break barriers definitely definitely that's amazing thank, thank you, you.